Support Wrestle Talk. Once more into the news, dear friends. Once more, I'm Adam from Wrestle Talk, and here's this week's 10 news stories you might have missed. Number one, WWE big push to sign indie star. Back in December, WWE held a huge tryout of indie talent, reportedly lasting a few days, with WWE giving regular trainees at the Performance Center those days off, according to Fightful Select. Hello, Sean. According to the same report, one of the standouts at this tryout was inaugural Ring of Honor Women's Champion Roxy, but apparently, even before she had performed well at the tryout, there was significant significant internal push within WWE to get her signed to a contract. Roxy has only just dropped the ROH women's title to Deonna Perazzo, and in years gone by, WWE have turned away talent because they were too young. However, especially with NXT 2.0's new direction and Cora Jade already challenging for the NXT Women's Championship after only just turning 21, the 20-year-old Roxy seems to be exactly what WWE is after. Number two, Grayson Walter. All right, fine, I'll talk about Gunther. On this week's episode of NXT 2.0, after a really great main event match with Roderick Strong, everyone's favorite wrestler, Walter, announced that he wasn't called Walter anymore, he was called Gunther. There's understandably been quite a bit of backlash to the name change, because why do you need to change his name? He's held one of your company's titles for over 800 days, you idiot! And also that whole thing where WWE trademarked the name Gunther Stark, which is also, coincidentally, I'm sure, the name of a Nazi U-boat commander from World War II. But instead of the, what the f*** are you doing, WWE heat, NXT star Grayson Waller has waded into the conversation to try and make it all about the heel heat. Posting to Twitter, Waller said, just so everyone knows, Walter was just too close to Waller, so I spoke to my lawyers and they are good at what they do, you're welcome. Nice try, Waller, but you can't fool me. Number three, why hometown heroes never win in WWE. It's a tale as old as time. WWE hates hometown heroes. Doesn't matter what era of WWE you choose, with very few exceptions, if a wrestler is wrestling in their hometown, chances are they will lose for that heel heat. WWE putting smiles on people's faces, especially when they don't. Matt Hardy recently spoke on an episode of his podcast, The Extreme Life of Matt Hardy, on why Vince McMahon has this weird booking philosophy in the first place, noting that it was this weird quirk of Vince's that cost the Hardy Boys from winning the tag titles during the first ever TLC match at SummerSlam 2000. They were originally booked to win before Vince realized they were in their home state of North Carolina and changed it. According to Matt, Vince thinks winning in a hometown is too predictable. Everyone in that venue is going to know you're going to win and they're expecting you to win, so I don't want to do that. Let's do it the next show. Matt continued by saying, Vince is a big advocate of if you're over as a babyface, there are times where you don't need to win. It doesn't make a difference, does it? Make a difference? Does anything make a difference? Why can I smell toast? What a time to be alive! Number four, Asuka in-ring returns soon, question mark. Someone who has been sorely missed from our TV screens is former multiple-time champion Asuka. She hasn't been seen in WWE for over six months after she needed dental surgery following a stiff kick to the face from Shayna Baszler where she lost a tooth, then also posting a photo with her dentist showing her arm in a brace, indicating she was dealing with another injury as well. Fortunately for fans of Asuka, also known as human beings, she should be returning any day now. According to Andrew Zane of the Mat Men podcast, she should be cleared now to return, which means she might, she might, be one of those surprise entrants in the Royal Rumble next week. Eyes looking to the left emoji. Number five, Alexa Bliss says, let it play out. Alexa Bliss has returned to our screens in recent weeks, going through therapy because her Lily doll was ripped up by Charlotte Flair at Extreme Rules last year. Also, she can move stuff with her mind, which feels like it should be bigger news in the medical community than her PTS doll. After the departure of Bray Wyatt from WWE and the outrage it caused for a lot of fans, many were expecting her to come back with a new character, and she has not. Seemingly in response to criticism about this, Alexa posted to Twitter saying, sometimes you need to just be patient and see how things play out. Feels like a bit of a hollow argument after the payoff to The Fiend storyline was him being released and the payoff to Alistair Black's new character was him being released and the payoff to Karrion Cross's new character was him being released. None of which are Alexa's fault, of course. Don't be a dick to her on social media. It just feels like the let it play out argument is a little played out. Number six, Lesnar versus Reigns will be different than we expect. Brock Lesnar versus Roman Reigns, a tale as old as balls. The everlasting WrestleMania feud that has been going on since, checks notes, WrestleMania 31. Crikey! The long-standing rumor was that it was going to be Brock Lesnar versus Roman Reigns at WrestleMania 38. However, after plans were shifted around at day one and Brock won the WWE Championship, many pondered whether this could lead to a title versus title match at Mania instead. Lesnar even mentioned the idea on SmackDown, but according to Dave Meltzer on Wrestling Observer Radio, this won't be happening, saying, that was not the direction they were planning on. I think we'll have a lot better idea of what's going to happen after the Royal Rumble. But if Seth wins against Roman Reigns and then Lesnar's wrestling Roman at Mania, I would presume Roman beats 
gets him to win a belt back. Swapsies! I mean, surely title for title actually makes sense. This year, with a drastically reduced roster, one world title each for men and women, one tag team championship, one secondary title, all the anemic divisions suddenly becoming deeper and all the titles becoming more important in a single move, just kill the brand split. Kill it before it lays eggs. Number 7. Conan Heart Surgery Perennial influence on the wrestling industry, Conan was reportedly recently hospitalized, according to Dave Meltzer, after what was described as a great deal of pain in his chest. Conan had originally attributed the source of pain to fractured ribs he suffered following an attack from FTR last June on Dynamite. However, it's now being reported by Alfonso Lizarraga of the Gladiators that Conan actually underwent heart surgery as a result of complications due to COVID-19. Conan had previously contracted COVID last February when he was also hospitalized due to a kidney issue. In more positive news, Lucha Blog is now reporting that thankfully he's in a stable condition. Best wishes to DJ Conan. Number eight, Swerve's post WWE career. One of the more egregious WWE releases in the past year was the group known as Hit Row, not just because they had potential as a group, but because they had literally just been called up to the main roster in the f***ing draft. Out of all the members of Hit Row, fans were generally most excited to see what Isaiah Swerve Scott, formerly known as Shane Strickland pre-WWE, would do next, as he'd built up his name in NXT as one of the more exciting wrestlers on the show. After he'd had several AEW stars as guest on his Swerve City podcast, many naturally assumed AEW was very possible for his next move, but it's the indies that have struck first, as Strickland, now going by Swerve the Realist, will be wrestling for Terminus on February 24th, as well as the Wrestling Revolver on April 16th. So, Swerve to AEW confirmed then. I just want to see Swerve versus Danielson, please. That'd be nice. Number 9. Adam Cole reunites with Da Party. Now, we normally try to end these weekly news roundup lists with a lighthearted or more positive story, but we're spoiling you this week because for you lucky sods, we've got two of them. Firstly, Da Party, or Da Party, or Da Party, were a subsection of Xavier Woods' YouTube channel Up, Up, Down, Down, made up of Woods, Cesaro, Tyler Breeze, and Adam Cole, and during the pandemic were a huge source of entertainment for many people. But unfortunately, after Cole left WWE and after Breeze was released, the quartet were forced to split up as an online group with their announcement of it on Twitter pulling at all the heartstrings. It was like a breakup, but somehow more emotional. This past week, though, the four of them reunited in honor of what would have been Betty White's 100th birthday to record a special song for Woods is a very public Golden Girl super fan, and he posted a picture of the four of them on Twitter, bringing back all the good feels of seeing Da Party back together again. Isn't that lovely? And number 10, Kyle O'Reilly's had a daughter. And let's end with even more good news. New AEW signee Kyle O'Reilly announced the birth of his daughter earlier this week, and she's adorable. Posting on Instagram, O'Reilly said, Welcome to the world, Janie Elizabeth Greenwood, named after my late mother who wants to be a granny more than anything. I am so proud to be your dad. Life is so precious and beautiful. You share a birthday with some amazingly influential and positive people, including Michelle Obama, Betty White, Muhammad Ali, and Jim Carrey. Plus, you were born on Martin Luther King Day during a full moon. That is some wildly positive energy right there. Once again, isn't that lovely? Hope you're all having a great weekend. And that's our list. What's been your favorite bit of wrestling news from the past week? Let us know about it. Make sure you subscribe to WrestleTalk for more up-to-the-minute wrestling news. Make WrestleTalk.com your homepage. And never forget to jam that jam.